morning to all my student lecture for the today's topic is regarding arm region and in mostly in the arm region we'll see the anterior compartment and the posterior compartment so the objective for the today's class class is muscles of anterior compartment of arm muscles of posterior compartment of arm we have the the muscular cutaneous nerve a brachial artery and uh, events occurring at the mid humerus so can you see here this is another skin we have the superficial fascia and this is another green color that is another deep fascia and this is the bone in the arm region that is known as the humerus bone so we have taken transverse sections of the the humerus uh, of the arm near the humerus so can you see here we have the two septum we can say medial intramuscular septum is present over here and this is known as the lateral intramuscular septum so with the help of these two septum the arm region is divided into anterior compartment and the posterior compartment and we will study about the muscles in the anterior compartment so mostly we will study about three muscles in the anterior compartment and in the posterior compartment we will study about the triceps muscle so we can see that with the help of the two intermuscular septum that is medial and the lateral the arm is divided into two compartment so the muscles in the anterior compartment are compartments are coracobrachialis biceps brachii and brachialis while in the posterior compartment we have the muscles that is known as triceps so before dealing with with the entire muscles let's know some of the features of the scapula or the humerus radius and the the, uh, the ulna bone so if this is a scapula so in the scapula we have the process that is known as the coracoid the process and this is known as the glenoid cavity so above the glenoid cavity we have the tubercle so this tubercle is known as supraglenoid tubercle while this is known as the, the infraglenoid tubercle then we have the humerus bone just keep in mind this is known as the lower anterior part of the humerus well this is known as the radius bone and this is known as the ulna bone in the radius bone we have the tuberosity that is known as the radial tuberosity and in the in the ulna bone we have the coronoid process as well as we have the ulna tuberosity also so basically this all landmarks will help us to understand the origin insertion of the the muscles so let's know all these muscles we have the muscles that is known as the coracobrachialis so can you see here this is known as the coracoid process the origin is from the tip of the coracoid process and the insertion is in the humerus bone that is the shaft so we can say that uh, middle of the shaft of the humerus so let's divide this humerus into three part upper one third middle one third and the lower one third. and this coracobrachialis is mostly inserted into the middle one third of the shaft of the humerus and nerve supply is muscular cutaneous nerve then action is flexion of the shoulder joint then morphological significance significance if you see here uh, uh, there is a term known as ligament of struthers okay so that can arise from the supratrochlear spine to the medial epicondyle you can see here again coracobrachialis origin is from, origin is from the the coraco coracoid process and the insertion is in the shaft of the the humerus can you see here this is known as the struthers ligament which is arising from the supracondylar process and it is attached to the medial epicondyle and can you see here we have the medial nerve and brachial artery is passing through the the deep to the ligament now what is the morphology of coracobrachialis so actually it represents the muscles of medial compartment of forelimb which is not well developed in the human being in some animals these muscles consist of three heads in human being the upper two heads are fused and muscular cutaneous nerve passes between the two fused head the lower third head has disappeared in the human beings but occasionally the lower head persists as a fibrous band that is known as the ligament which we have seen in the previous diagram now that ligaments extends between the supracondylar spur and 
to the medial epicondyle of the humerus right the medial median nerve and brachial nerve then passes between the ligaments and maybe sometimes it is compressed now next muscles is known as the biceps brachii so biceps means two head so we have the short head and we have the long head you can see here this is again coracoid process the short head is getting originated from the tip of the coracoid process while long head from the supraglenoid tubercle and this muscles is inserted into the posterior part of radial tuberosity or we can say into the radial tuberosity and we have the term known as the bicipital aponeurosis also which goes and attached to the posterior part with posterior border of the ulna and this muscle is also supplied by musculocutaneous down the action of the biceps brachii is the supination of the forearm and the next action is the flexure of the elbow joint you can see the muscles this is known as the short head while this is known as the long head which is passing through the bicipital group and can see here the insertion is in the radial tuberosity and this is known as the bicipital aponeurosis the third muscles that is known as brachialis brachialis muscles is also known as hybrid muscles so any muscles which is having two nerve supply two different nerve supply that is known as the hybrid hybrid muscles also known as composite muscles so if you see the origin that is from the lower half of the shaft of the humerus that is from the anterior aspect and can see here the muscles is inserted into the coracoid process of ulna and even to the ulna tuberosity so this muscles is having the two nerve supply that is by the musculocutaneous nerve and we have the radial nerve the medial two third is supplied by musculocutaneous and lateral one third is supplied by radial now if you see the action it is known as it helps in flexion of the elbow joint and this muscle is also known as work horse of the elbow joint you can see here this is also the brachialis muscles now this is the dissection of the the pectoral uh, of the biceps brachii muscles deep to the biceps brachii you can see here this is known as the brachialis muscle and in the medial aspect we have the muscles this is known as the coracobrachialis muscle now keep in mind all the muscles three muscles that is biceps brachii brachialis and coracobrachialis it is supplied by musculocutaneous nerve but there is exceptional case that is known as brachialis which is also supplied by a radial nerve so we have to know about the musculocutaneous nerve so can you see here uh, the muscular cutaneous nerve it is arising from the lateral cord of the brachial plexus having the root value c5 c6 and the c7 this muscle runs downwards and pierces the coracobrachialis muscle and in the arm region it supplies to the biceps brachii it also it is also supplying to the brachialis it also supplies to the elbow joint and near the cuboidal fossa it pass pierces the deep fascia and continues as a lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm which goes and supply to the lateral part of the skin of the forearm right so you can draw this diagram and can see a same thing is mentioned over here also right so it is originated from the lateral cord of the brachial plexus and these all are the root value it is piercing the coracobrachialis muscle and it runs between the biceps brachii and brachialis muscle and it is appearing near the lateral margin of the biceps tendon and pierces the deep fascia that is near the elbow joint again and which continues as lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm now we can write here we have the motor function or we can say muscular branch so you know about all those three muscles biceps brachii brachialis and coracobrachialis also all these muscles is supplied by muscular cutaneous sensory function means cutaneous branch means it goes and supply to the lateral surface of the forearm through the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm and we have the articular branch so that articular branch means it also supplies to the the elbow joint so if there is any injury to the muscular cutaneous nerve there can be loss of strong flexion and supination there is can be a loss of biceps tendon reflex and loss of sensation along the lateral aspect of the forearm now we have uh, the one of the main artery that is present in the arm region that is known as the brachial artery so you know about subclavian artery which continues as axillary artery so till the lower border of the teres major muscles that is known as the the axillary artery 
and from the lower border till the neck of the radius it is known as brachial artery so can you say here so that the brachial artery is a continuation of axillary artery and we have to know the extension from where to where a brachial artery is present so can you say here the extension is from the lower border of the teres major to the neck of the the radius so till from the lower border of teres major to the neck of the radius we have the brachial artery and we have to know the branches so we have the branches that is known as profunda brachii artery so this profunda brachii artery it will pass from the posterior aspect of the humerus bone that is from the spiral group along with the radial nerve and it gives two branches basically so it gives anterior descending branch and posterior descending branch right same how we have the other artery that is known as superior ulnar collateral artery and we have the inferior ulnar collateral artery so these all are the branches which is arising from the brachial artery same how we have the other branch we can say the nutrient artery and small small muscular branch will be there and so these all are the artery which helps in anastomosis near the elbow joint so that i'll take in the next lecture and the two terminal branch of the brachial artery is known as radial artery and ulnar artery so these all are the branches profunda brachii nutrient artery superior ulnar collateral artery inferior ulnar collateral artery muscular branch and we have the two terminal branch that is known as radial artery and ulnar artery so if you see the applied anatomy so mostly it is used for recording the the bp that is blood pressure it is also it also helps in uh, uh, blood gas uh, gas analysis that is arterial blood gas analysis there can be a compression of the brachial artery also that is the you have studied about the ligaments so then we we have the term known as ruptured of the brachial artery so whenever there is a fracture of the the humerus bone that is supracondylar fracture of the humerus bone so that leads to a condition that is known as volksmann ischemic contracture so can you see here ischemia right so it means it can leads to necrosis of the muscles now these all are the events which is occurring near the insertion of the coraco brachialis muscle right so can you see this is known as the humerus bone so that is in the middle one third part right so we have the insertion of the coraco brachialis the insertion of the deltoid also and keep in mind the ulnar nerve is first of all is it is present in the anterior compartment then it will pierce the medial intermuscular septum and comes to the posterior compartment same how radial artery is in the posterior compartment it will pierce the lateral intermuscular septum and comes to the anterior compartment same how medial nerve is lateral to the brachial artery and it comes towards the the medial aspect so these all are the changes same how uh, we have the basalic vein so basalic vein it is cutaneous it will pierce the the deep fascia and it goes inside so these all are the events which is taking place near the middle one third of the humerus so can see here so there can be a nutrient artery entering into the humerus that is also a events origin of the brachialis we have the insertion of the deltoid insertion of the coraco brachialis radial nerve emerging from the spiral group that is from the posterior compartment to anterior compartment basalic vein perforating the deep fascia and goes inside we have medial nerve crossing the anterior portion that is from lateral to medial side it is coming then we have the ulnar nerve and superior ulnar collateral artery it is piercing the the medial intermuscular septum and it is going on the back side so these all are the events so we have done with the anterior compartment of the the arm region now we have the posterior compartment of the the arm region so in the posterior compartment we have one major muscles that is known as the triceps muscles so triceps means we have three head so we have long head we have the lateral head and we have the medial head right so long head it is getting originated from infraglenoid tubercle and we have the lateral head so lateral head in the posterior aspect of the humerus or in the posterior surface of the humerus we have the oblique ridge or we can say there is a spiral group above the spiral group we have the origin of the the lateral head 
and below the spiral groove we have no region of the median head so you can see here long head from infraglenar tube of pallor of the humerus lateral head that is from the oblique ridge above the spiral groove on the upper part of posterior surface of shaft of the humerus so over here and below the spiral groove so this is spiral groove below the spiral groove that is in the origin of medial head takes place from the posterior surface of lower half of the shaft of the humerus that is below the, the spiral groove and the muscles is getting inserted into the olecranon process so this is olecranon process which is present in the labrum the nerve supply is by radial nerve and the action of the triceps is it is a powerful extensor of the elbow joint so we should know about the spiral groove also so this area is known as the spiral groove above we have the lateral head of triceps and below we have the medial head of triceps so can you see here the boundaries if you see the boundary anteriorly can we say humerus bone so we can say that middle one third of shaft of the humerus from the anterior aspect above we have the, the lateral head of triceps below we have medial head of triceps right and posteriorly there must be a fibers which is connecting the lateral head long head and the, the medial head and the content is we have the radial nerve and profunda brachii artery and from the radial nerve some branch will be arising so can you see here in the spiral group we have cutaneous branch that is known as lower lateral cutaneous nerve of arm we have posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm also and we have the muscular branch that is lateral and medial head of triceps and we have the knob to anconius that is arising from the spiral group can you see here this is spiral group and we have the content profunda brachii and radial nerve and its branches thank you